My name is Mark Broderson. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the Mayo Clinic here in Jacksonville. Uh, as, as our patient population is aging and more people are coming in with gray hair like I have, um, a lot of people come in with complaints of pain in the knee. And that turns out frequently to be knee arthritis. And so what I wanted to talk about here for a few minutes was how I approach knee arthritis, both from the non-surgical as well as surgical standpoint. It's important to know the anatomy of the knee. And in the knee, there are two kinds of cartilage. There are the meniscus cartilages, which are the rubbery bumpers that sit in between the ends of the bone. And when a football player has a torn cartilage, it's that rubbery bumper that's damaged. The other type of cartilage is the covering cartilage that's on the surface of the bone, that's white and smooth and slippery, like the knuckle on the end of the turkey drumstick, that white covering on the end of the bone. Arthritis is a disease that attacks that white covering and causes it to break down. So instead of being white and smooth and slippery, it becomes yellow and sandpapery. And slowly then, as the time goes by, is that that white covering grinds away and you end up with bone on bone. So when you look at an x-ray and it shows that the bone is clo coming closer together or bone is touching bone, what that's telling us is that, that you have arthritis in the knee and that arthritis is causing the trouble. Arthritis is a disease, like diabetes is a disease or hepatitis is a disease or psoriasis is a disease. Each of those diseases affect primarily a different tissue in the body. So just like diabetes affects your pancreas or hepatitis your liver or psoriasis your skin, arthritis attacks that white covering on the surface of the bone. This is a disease that is progressive and unfortunately has no cure. It progresses though at a rate that's different for each person. So because this disease is likely to progress, but at some rate that we can't predict, whether you're active or not, it's okay to adjust your activity level based on how much pain you want to put up with. In other words, if there's something that you want to do and you know, I'm going to pay for that later because of what I'm doing now, that soreness later is really not telling you. It's not telling you that you're hastening the destruction of the joint or causing things to wear out quicker. So again, it's okay to adjust your activities based on how much pain you want to put up with. Now the treatment for this non-fatal disease falls into either the non-surgical category or the surgical category. So from the non-surgical standpoint, we like people to use soft or cushion sole shoes to dampen the impact of your foot hitting the ground. We like people to do exercises to keep your leg muscles strong. It's like your car. If your shock absorbers work well, then the frame lasts longer. Uh, we like people to use a cane. Now, a hundred years ago, every fashionable young person had a cane or a parasol, but now they're out of fashion and no one likes to use them. But using a cane for long walks or walking on rough ground or uneven ground can be really helpful. If the arthritis affects one side of the knee more than the other, and that's where you get the pain, sometimes we can also use a brace called an unloading brace that can actually spring open the inside of the knee or the outside of the knee to take the pressure off. From the medication standpoint, those really fall into three categories. There are the rub-ons like Bengay, Mineral Ice, uh, Blue Stuff, Blue Emu, there's about a thousand of those, and some people find that those are really helpful. There are pills, and there are a lot of pills that are on the market. The most common are what we call non-steroidals. A non-steroidal would be like aspirin or Aleve or aspirin that you can get over the counter, and then there's another bunch that you need a prescription for. People always ask, well, what's the best one? Well, if there's a best one, there wouldn't be 20 of them. So sometimes one can be a miracle drug for one person and not help the next person very much. And in the same way, sometimes one can bother your kidneys or liver or stomach and not bother the next person. So if you're going to take them, you have to take them under the supervision of your internist or your family doctor. The third category are medicines that we inject into the knee. And the most common thing that we put in the knee is cortisone. Now cortisone has a soothing effect to the lining of the joint. Kind of like when you put salve on a burn, it helps to soothe the irritation. Um, I use cortisone primarily for special occasions because it doesn't usually last a long time. So if you're going, if you're going on a big trip and you want to um, you need to feel really good for a couple of weeks or a month. An injection of cortisone once or twice a year is perfectly okay. Used excessively, like every week or every month, it'll actually sometimes hasten the breakdown of the normal cartilage, so it has to be used sparingly. The third group uh, of injections are medicines that are um, uh, made from the uh, combs of roosters. And the comb on the rooster's head has cartilage, like the cartilage in your ear. And that rooster cartilage is purified, it comes in a syringe, uh, and, and we inject that into the knee, sometimes in a series of three to five injections a week apart. The stuff is really thick. It's kind of like putting jello in the knee. It increases the viscosity or the thickness of the lubricating fluid to help dampen the impact of your foot 
and the, and the weight going through your knee. From the non-surgical standpoint, that's what's available. None of those things cure the arthritis, but may make it a bit easier to live with. People sometimes come in and they say, can I have arthroscopic surgery? Now, arthroscopic surgery, we make a couple little nicks in the skin, put a tube inside the knee, has a light on one end, TV camera on the other. If we're dealing with a torn meniscus cartilage, works really well. Probably 95% success rate. On the other hand, when arthritis is a part of the equation, arthroscopic surgery can't really fix that. We can do some house cleaning and some, and some things to try and improve the temporary function, but it really can't cure the problem, at least at this point. So arthroscopic surgery to treat arthritis is sometimes not very predictable, therefore not usually ordinarily recommended. If there's a mechanical problem where the knee locks, that usually is related to a meniscus, and we can fix that, but the general pain type of problem that goes along with arthritis really doesn't respond well to arthroscopic surgery. Now, then we talk about knee replacement surgery. In knee replacement surgery, sometimes people think that if you have a knee replacement, we just cut here and cut here and kind of slap in a new knee. But actually, what's involved with that operation involves really a resurfacing of the ends of the bone. So there's a, what we end up doing is that we reshape the end of the thigh bone and put a metal covering on the end of the thigh bone and a little plastic spacer that sits on the top of the tibia or the shin bone. So it's really more like retreading a tire. This is an operation that takes about an hour and a half to do. You're in the hospital usually three days. You're on a walker for about a week, maybe 10 days, and then a cane for another month and then nothing at all. 95% of people that go through this operation have a significant improvement in their quality of life so that they can walk or swim or dance or ride a bike with less pain.